First, a little background information from Chapter 6 of the Sports Gene, titled The Trainability of Muscle. In the early 1990s, John Hopkins geneticist Xin Jin Li had begun searching for muscle. Not finished muscle, but the protein scaffold that builds it. In 1997, he found the myostatin gene, responsible for limiting muscle growth. Mutations of this gene can result in what David Epstein calls double muscle. Pharmaceutical companies became interested in myostatin inhibitors for anti-aging, since declining muscle function is a consequence of aging. Another aspect of muscle trainability is the muscle building growth factor, IGF-1. A study done at the University of Pennsylvania confirmed the more unregulated IGF-1 people had in their bodies, the greater the ability they had to grow muscle. This growth factor declines with age and represents another potential target for pharmaceutical companies. Looking into the Major League Baseball community, age can have a major impact on the player's performance. The average age of baseball players ranges from 25 to 31 years old, with the oldest player currently being 42 years old. Alex Rodriguez was 32 years old when he was first accused of using performance enhancement drugs, and 38 years old when he was suspended for this. His continued use of enhancement drugs, despite public criticism, suggests he was worried about muscle deterioration as he aged. After reading the sports gene, we know that the quality of muscle function is determined by your genes. By studying the epigenetics of aging, older athletes could possibly be able to compete with younger athletes for longer periods of time. Epigenetics is the study of changes in gene expression that are not caused by the change of the DNA sequence itself. Epigenetic developments are necessary to normal cell growth, such as recessive allele silencing, but if it occurs inappropriately, negative cell function can occur. Identical twins who have spent more time together and lived a similar lifestyle show closer epigenetic patterns than those who have been separated possibly indicating the involvement of environmental factors such as exercise, diet, and social interactions on epigenetics. Epigenetic modifications are believed to be completely removed during gamete synthesis, though this has been challenged. Aging is thought to be caused by numerous complex and interacting factors. These include depletion of self-renewing stem cells, shortening of telomeres, and other epigenetic processes. A proposed cause of aging is the accumulation of epigenetic noise, which disrupts youthful gene expression patterns that are required for cells to function optimally and recover from damage. One of the most studied forms of epigenetic modification is DNA methylation because of its possible role in cancer and as a biomarker in cancer studies. DNA methylation is used in normal biological processes such as genomic imprinting and X chromosome inactivation. Yamaka transcription factors are a set of four genes that have the unique ability to reprogram somatic cells that become pluripotent stem cells, referred to as OSKM genes. Pluripotent stem cells have the unique ability of forming any differentiated cell in the body. These genes were isolated in 2006 by scanning genes important to embryonic stem cell development. These genes were mostly used to research induced pluripotent stem cells, but also to research tissue repair, and even organ synthesis. New research into OSKM factors suggests its potential anti-aging properties. One lab has proposed a method of using OSK genes to reverse the effects of age-related epigenetics. The gene CMYK was included in the original OSKM genes, but was excluded from this study because it is an oncogen. This method is called the recovery of information via epigenetic reprogramming, or REVIVER for short. In this method, an adeno-associated viral, or AAV vector, is used to deliver the OSK genes. The expression of these genes is tightly regulated by a tetracycline response element. Doxycycline, referred to as DOX, is a synthetic tetracycline that was used in these experiments. To demonstrate that reviver method could work, researchers begin with an in vitro experiment using mice fibroblasts from young and old mice. The fibroblasts were treated with the AAV vector, then given docs to induce expression of the OSK genes. qPCR data showed a significant increase in the OSK gene expression. With this in vitro model validated, they then moved to an animal model. 
Because the central nervous system is one of the first tissues to lose regenerative capacity with aging, they chose the eye as a model tissue. Mice at 12 months of age initially demonstrated a significant reduction in visual abilities compared to four-month-old mice as measured by several visual functionality tests. Young mice and old mice were given in vivo injections into the eye to deliver the AAV vectors containing the OSK genes. Amazingly enough, after just four weeks of DOCS-induced expression of the OSK genes, the vision of the aged mice was restored. Because there was no significant increase in the numbers of retinal cells, the increase in vision was hypothesized to be a functional improvement from TET-dependent epigenetic reprogramming by removing DNA methylation. To test this hypothesis, RNA sequencing data from retinal cells treated with the AAV vector was analyzed. Figure A shows a scatter plot of OSK-induced changes versus age-associated changes in MRNA levels. Dots represent differentially expressed genes in retinal cells. Figure B is a hierarchical clustral heat map showing RNA sequencing expression of the sensory genes and flow cytometry sorted retinal cells from young or old mice, or old mice treated with it, either OSK off or OSK on AAV vector. Figure C is the top 10 biological processes that are lower and old compared to young mice that were restored by a reviver. Figure D is the top 10 biological processes that are in higher in old compared to young mice and reduced by reviver. These results identified 418 out of 464 age-related genes were restored to youthful expression levels after just four weeks of OSK gene expression. Of those 418 genes, 44 are directly involved in sensory perception. So now that Reviver has demonstrated the ability to reverse the symptoms of aging, the question becomes, when will professional athletes begin using it? This technology could possibly be used as performance enhancing, especially with the case of aging athletes. I wonder if Reviver could fix Drew Brees' ulnar collateral ligament so he could lead the Saints to another Super Bowl.